Okay, so here we go on your warm up. Let's go over these ones here. Um, I do on the first problem that you guys have here. You want to notice that it is asking which one of these statements or are false. So if you have your data set and your IQR is in here somewhere, okay. And the the highest item. So say that this highest item gets doubled. Okay, so if that gets doubled, then what's going to happen? Will the mean increase? No. Yes. Okay. The mean will increase. Will the standard deviation increase? Yes. Why? This one that is farther away will make it so that it's in a higher average distance from the mean. Okay, so that does increase. Will this IQR increase? Okay, that is not true. So let's double check the others. The range increases? Yes, of course, it's much farther away. And then how about the median? Will this be affected? It will not. It will remain unchanged. So those are all true statements. The one that's false is C. Okay. Now, Okay. No, it says, oh, it's double, like there's two of them. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So here we go. Number two. This is a five number summary. So tell me, tell me these values of this, uh, what does this 35 represent? Then, what's 68? Okay. 77 is the median. 83. Okay. And then this is a max. Okay. I, I may not have drawn it to scale. Okay. Now, we want to know how many. We want to know the number in this section here. Okay. So, what do we have to know in order to tell how many are in there? Good. How many total items, yes, are, are represented? And since 196, and this is one of the quartiles, so then how do I know how many is in each quartile? You can either divide by 4 or multiply by 25%. Either way, <clears throat> you get 49. So that means that there are 49 members in each one of these four sections. 49 items represented there. Okay. All right, next, number three. What's the first one you were able to knock off? Okay, A is skewed left, and we know that our picture is skewed to the right. Okay, now, we have a benefit right here of having a frequency scale. So since we have a frequency, what can I tell about every single one of these bars? I know how many. So I can account for the fact that there are 40 items represented in this histogram. And so since I can account for 40 items, I now can identify the item, that the item number that would be the Q1, median, Q3, and all those kinds of things. And I could approximate even the IQR and such. So if we have 40 items, find the median. That would put how much in each half? 20 would be in each half. Okay, now, is there a, a whole one right here, or is this the middle of the 20th item and the 21st item? Okay, it's the middle of the 20th and the 21st item. Okay, because we had an even number that put 20 on each side. Okay, so there we go. So let's find the middle of the 20th and 21st item. Here's 5. 5 plus 11 makes 16. 16 plus, here's the 21st item. So our median is right there. Do I know its exact value? I do not know its exact value, but do I know a, a range of possibility? From what to what? From 20 up to 30. 
25 but not including 30. So from 20. So the median is going to be from 20 up to 30. Then that makes the thing going to be not B or C, not B or C. This one right here actually kind of makes me have to check a whole lot more on D. I don't think that's typical that you're going to see this thing because I think technically there's a lot of details that you can't verify from a histogram. Um, but I will tell you, I did this morning approximate where the Q1 was. It ended up being between the 10th and the 11th item. That was about right there. So it's somewhere between 10 and 20. Okay. And then the Q3 was here. It just happened it was 10 more items. So it was somewhere between 30 and 40. Okay, so that's correct. So with that being correct, I also approximated the, um, the outlier fence and it was somewhere out here which put these two items as outliers. Okay, what I would recommend to you in this, in this event, circle D and then go back later and like do all of those other specifics like the Q1, Q3, and outlier fence to knock this one off if you have time. Okay, I don't really think that that's going to be an occurrence with the AP test though. Next. Okay. So the person that brought this question wants to tell how you can see if the mean is higher than the median. So what are they getting at that we know affects mean and median? Skew. Skew. So this is what? Skewed right. Okay, so we're not there or there. And we're not symmetric. So which one is it then? Is the mean higher or lower? Higher. Okay. So the goal behind this was to see if you knew that the mean was pulled in the direction of the skew. All right. Again, I want you to think, what's the person that wrote this question trying to verify that you understand from statistics? This is uh, talking about multiplying by 1.2 and then adding 15. And they want to, they're asking you what happens to the center, which is the mean, and what happens to the spread, which is the what? Standard deviation. Okay, they give you the mean for center and the spread the standard deviation for spread. So tell me, so the goal of this question, the person that wrote this is seeing if you know the rules about multiplication and addition and all those things with center and with spread. So, how are the centers affected by multiplication? Are they multiplied? Is the center going to be multiplied? By 1.2? Yes. Will the center, okay, so let's do that. So the center is multiplied by 1.2. Will you also shift it up 15? You do. The center is affected by multiplication and addition. So our center of 51 is affected by multiplication and addition. Okay? All right, now, let's look at our picture again. Okay, here's our picture. Let me shrink it back down. Okay, so think about the spread. Think about how wide this is, standard deviation. Is it affected by multiplication? Yes, it became much wider, much more spread out. If I shift it up 15, does the spread change? So spread is only affected by multiplication. So the standard deviation times the 1.2 is 6. So the person gave you this problem to see if you knew that center was affected by both and standard deviation only affected by one of them. Okay? All right. Number six. Here we have a cumulative frequency. We are told that it is in percentages, so it is relative to the total of um, students. And this is about their total um, sleep on Friday and Saturday nights. Okay. So the first question, 6A, is what is the interpretation of this point, 1170, 
11, of course, is the number of hours. 70 is the number of percent. So what does that say? Good. I hear you. 70% of students got the combined 11 hours of sleep. <clears throat> and here's the whole idea behind a cumulative graph or less. So they may have gotten eight, they may have gotten seven, they might have gotten even as little as three, okay? But they, 70% had that much or less. Okay, question two says find the IQR. How do I identify an IQR? Good. Well, do I need to find the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile and then subtract? So let's identify those. So I just come over here and I see 25th percentile puts me at 8.5. So Q1 is 8.5. Okay, 75th percentile puts me to how much? Okay, so Q3 is 11.5. So, what does that make then the IQR? So, Q1, 11 and a half minus 8 and a half is 3. Okay, good. Determine if there are any outliers in the data. Show your work. So, our work for outliers. So, let's do the upper fence. The rule is about Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Q3 you told me was? 11.5. 11, 11 IQR you told me was? 3. That makes it a value of 16. The upper fence is at 16. So you want to find, is there any data above that? Then I would know that's an outlier. And so here it is. Is there any data above that? So there is no upper outlier. Okay, how do I do the lower fence? Okay, Q1 minus one and a half IQR. So that was eight and a half minus one and a half times three, which makes it four. So I go here and I put my lower fence here at four. And so what do I know about this? That there is at least one. I don't know how many is in there, but I know there's at least one. So if the answer was going for at least two, then there would have been something on the lower side and something on the upper side. But since there's not something on the upper side, then it's just at least one. Okay. So therefore, that's what we're going for as at least one outlier. Okay, yes. <laughs> Cumulant, if it said, okay, good question. Okay, here we go, listen up. If all this problem said was cumulative frequency, that would be counts of students. That would be like how many total students there were. But because, of course, it has a percentage sign, or if it uses the word relative, those are synonymous in both implying percent. So the relative turns it into um, in terms of percent, or just in having the word, the percent sign there. Okay? Does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Very good. So put everything away, and let's quiz.